Kentaro Miura's Berserk is the benchmark for any seinen manga. With its dark yet gripping story, Berserk has become one of the most famous manga series, and it has inspired other anime, manga, games, etc. The manga has some of the most well-written characters in the medium. One of the most recognized and popular main characters in the series is Griffith, the captain of Band of Hawk. The Berserk fanbase is divided in their opinion about Griffith, the majority of the fan base believes that Griffith is a heinous villain aka asshole. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the f is that? Who does not have a moral code whatsoever. However, there are some who are more lenient on him despite his terrible actions. This split has sparked countless debates. Griffith, the charismatic and ambitious leader of the Band of the Hawk, achieved his ultimate goal of acquiring his own kingdom by sacrificing his comrades to become a member of the God Hand and bringing about the Eclipse. With his newly acquired power, Griffith established his own kingdom known as Falconia, a place where humans could be protected from the ever-present dangers of the world. Griffith's ambition does not stop there. As he sits on his throne as the ruler of his own kingdom, he continues to search for more power and control. He seeks to unite all of humanity under his banner, creating a utopia where he is the ultimate ruler. Griffith also desires to become a deity, as he believes that a god can rule over humanity without the need for violence or oppression. Humans follow the fate set forth by the idea of evil and the behelot which the chosen ones receive draw them to the currents of causality, thus, reaching a point of despair and malice, that they decide to offer sacrifice to get rid of this feeling. Turning into an apostle doesn't end fate but marks a watershed moment. They are still headed for the destiny set forth by fate knowingly or unknowingly. As for Griffith, his fate was set by the idea of evil and the crimson behelot made sure that he remains drawn to the currents of causality. As it is already clear in the manga, this dream of having his kingdom is the reason why Griffith, in his human form, lived, later took rebirth into an angel. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. <laughs> to start his expedition of having a kingdom again, and had reincarnation into a human to claim the human world from the existing emperors. Accounting for the developments of the manga, there is no doubt that this dream has not been abandoned but has been invigorated with new plans. In your words, the dream did not get to hell, but hell has been brought to earth by him to rule both simultaneously from Falconia. This theory was white hot when chapter 345 dropped. I remember the subreddit going crazy with the theory and I loved it. I think lots of people loved it too. But at the time there wasn't sufficient evidence to think Griffith would go higher. All we were told by Guts is that Griffith is the type of person to continue chasing a goal after it's done. So here we are now, Berserk chapter 362 has given us clear evidence that Skull Knight is King Geyseric. We know that there is a new god hand every 216 years but for some reason Void has lived for more than 1000 years. There is an underlying condition to this. Skull Knight's eclipse is identical to Guts. Void was waiting for Griffith. In 362 the god hand behind Void were much like in that situation. Causality and fate is an endless cycle as what we've seen. But if this is the case, if the God Hand were waiting for Void, much like how the current God Hand were waiting for Griffith, was there someone before Void? Was this the birth of the God Hand? There's no evidence to believe that the God Hands are ranked in status. We know Void is the leader because of his behaviorism. But does the leader get to live longer than the annual length? And if that's the case, if the God Hand were waiting for their leader Void, what would happen if Slain, Ubik, Conrad, and Void were to suddenly disappear from existence? Would that appointment Griffith as the next leader? If immortality exists as becoming the leader of the God Hand, then why wouldn't Griffith chase this as his next goal? But this whole idea of Griffith wanting more is not strange to us as human beings. We don't stop when we achieve our goals. We set new ones because we want satisfaction. The feeling of achieving a goal you've really worked hard for is a really satisfying experience. You can laugh and cry with happiness because your hard work has paid off. Maybe Griffith takes it too far. You didn't have to cut me off. 
Yes, he sacrificed the band of the hawk. But seriously, if we all watched or read about the eclipse, you would see why he did it. He did it for the thousands of people who fought for him to achieve his life goal of having a kingdom. Because if he refuses to sacrifice, the 100 people who came to save him and thousands of other people's lives who already died for his dream would be essentially worthless. This mentality was shown in the attack on Titan by Erwin Smith when the army was attacked by the beast Titan. He said to his followers, We all die. But does that mean our lives are meaningless? Does that mean that there was no point in our being born? Would you say that of our slain comrades? What about their lives? Were they meaningless? They were not. Their memory serves as an example to us all. The courageous fallen. The anguished fallen. Their lives have meaning because we the living refuse to forget them. And as we ride to certain death, we trust our successors to do the same for us. I know a lot of us hate Griffith for what he did in the eclipse, especially what he did to Casca. Even though I did a video trying to explain why Griffith did that. It's all just my imagination. Maybe things are not that simple. Maybe the story still hides a lot of things that we have no idea about. So we can't actually make sure of our own personal analysis of Griffith's character. As for what now, we don't know. Griffith wanted a kingdom. But we're not sure what Femta wants. The story of Berserk is still missing a lot of essential information, such as the nature and goal of the God Hand. Even though we know Griffith to an extent, we still don't know what has changed since he became Femto. Griffith for me is such simple and complex at the same time. Simple, cause Miura made him just like any selfish human who has great ambition. And complex, because he's such an unpredictable character. For example, he's the one that hurt Casca the most so why now he's taking her from guts. His motivation and actions are not predictable at all. Over time, my opinion of Griffith has changed from admiration for his absolute loyalty to himself and his dream to a far more sophisticated appreciation of his position within the berserk world. He stands for submitting to the will of the universe, discovering your mission, and operating in perfect harmony with the natural order of things becoming an unstoppable force of nature. In my opinion, he overcomes the extremely limited perspective of humanity in order to view the big picture and acquire profound wisdom about the fundamental structure of existence. I'm really tired of analyzing Griffith's character. We've reached the end of this video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and bye.